Welcome back. The All Progressives Congress APC yesterday commenced the screening of aspirants seeking its presidential ticket for the 2023 elections. The screening was earlier slated for May 23, but indefinitely postponed by the National Working Committee of the party. 11 of its party of the party's 23 presidential hopefuls faced a seven-man screening committee chaired by former national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Chief John Odige Oyegun, at the Transcop Hilton Abuja. Now, those screened included former Lagos State Governor Bola Ahmed Tinubu, former Governor of Ogun State Ibukunle, uh, Ibikunle Amosu, former Minister of Transportation Chibuka Mechi, Jigawa State Governor Abubakar Badaru, and former Minister of State for Education Chikwemeka Mwajiuba. Others also screened were Eboni State Governor David Omahi, Felix Nicholas, Senator Ajayi Boroface, former Senate President Ken Namani, Mrs. Uju Ken Ohaneye, and former Governor of Zamfara State, Sani Yerima. Now, to help us analyze this, uh, we have a guest analyst joining us um, live on the program via Zuma. I'd like to say a very good morning and welcome uh, to the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa, uh, none other uh, than Joseph Edgar, who is a political analyst. Joseph, good morning to you, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. God bless you. All right, all right. Um, indeed, the, the APC has had a, not a smooth ride to where it is right now, uh, to the promised land, but at least they've started the process of screening their candidates. What are your thoughts on how it's been for the party um, in getting to this point, even despite the fact that it's all clouded in some sort of a, uh, rumors and controversy of who will be screened and who has been chosen and who has not been chosen and all that. Okay, so to get a better context of what's happening with APC, you need to go back to its origins. Do not forget that APC wasn't a party that was formed from um, a very strong ideals. It was a coming together. You get was an arrangement, you get me now, of different tendencies to achieve a set purpose. And that purpose was to achieve power take power away from the PDP. And then once that was achieved, you get, then the spoils of war had to be shared. That means that that marriage had to continue to be in place, you get, for the spoils of war to be shared equitably and judiciously. Now, if they achieve that, it's, it's left for historians to, to, to listen. So now, all of those confusion, all of those lack of an ideology that will wield all the power zones together, you get, it's not coming to play here now. Do you understand? So the one uniting force you get that kept all of them together all of these eight years is no longer at play, which is the president. The president is not coming out for an election. The president will complete his two terms and the president is out. You get so now everybody, all tendencies, all forces are now naked. You get jostling for that one position. And now because there is no one ideal ideology to, to wheel them together, to guide them, to control them. You get, we are seeing all of this. Are you getting me now? It's a law of confusion. Whether I want to zone to the north, I want to zone to the south, whether it's the turn of the southeast, whether it's the turn of the southwest, even in the southwest, I've seen people coming out, oh, he's a godfather, he's not the godfather. I've seen people coming out from the south south. There is just no uniformity. Do you get everything just scattered? And the most painful thing about the whole thing is that this has grave implications for democracy in Nigeria. This has grave implications mm -hmm. for the people of this country. You know, so that's my problem. That's my first um, shout out this morning. Some have, have said, uh, some members of the party have said, you know what, all that is playing out in the APC, you've talked about a being confused uh, situation. Is, is democracy in action? What do you say to that? No, see, so the good thing about this whole thing, I said, I said it in one of my articles recently, is that Nigerians seem to have taken, have seem to have em embedded the democracy. Now, whether the democracy we are having is, 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 is a bastardized one or not is not the issue. Are you getting me now? The whole country is not enamored by these two major primaries from these two major parties. Everybody talk about PDP and APC and all of that. So that's a beautiful thing. That's a, that's a strong point for democracy. We'll get it right eventually. But right now, we're very far from it. You know but like I said, you know, like you have also heard, you get the most important thing here now is that nobody's saying anything about, oh, military should come. Or whatever. We are all focused on this democracy, the Nigerian variant, Nigerian type of democracy. It is a democracy we should all be proud of. Very far from ideal, bastardized democracy, 
uh, a jugular democracy. Well, it's our democracy. We are okay with it. <laughs> All right. Maybe maybe we are, we are evolving. Um, uh, we are evolving. And uh, our, own very brand, slowly, brand, our own brand. Very democracy. slowly, but we'll get there. All right. All right. Um, um, you, you've rightly, you know, talked about the issue and controversy surrounding uh, zoning in the All Progressives Congress. And there was talk, indeed, uh, that the party uh, was going to zone its presidential ticket to a particular part of the country, either north or south, or even go as far as geopolitical zoning. Um, that hasn't happened yet. Atiko Bubakar has emerged as the flag bearer of the PDP. Um, he is from the northwestern part of the country. He is from the northern part of Nigeria. Do you think that it, something could still happen? Uh, how do you think the APC will position itself to respond um, to this emergence of Atiko Bubakar as per the permutations of zoning uh, and the politics of zoning in Nigeria? Okay, so what we need to understand very clearly is that in, that in politics, there's no morality. Do you understand? There's no emotions. Do you get it? It's raw calculations. Do you get it? You must win the election. So I'm not going to go and give myself a weakened position because I want to pander to some moralistic uh, uh, views that power should be zoned to a particular part of the country because they've not had power forever. No. Democracy is a game of numbers. And you can see from what's happening now that Nigerian politicians are very, very astute um, 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 politicians. They will look at things strategically. Do you understand? So the question now is that PDP has thrown up Article Worker from the northwestern part of the country, like I have said. So the APC is going to go back to the drawing board. How do we counter this? How are we going to win this election? Where is our strength? How do we neutralize our people? I'm telling you, my brother, at this point in time, APC, the issue of zone is out of the window for good, if they have sense. If I wear their shoes, I'll do the same. Do you understand? Why would I go and zone it to a part of the country that don't have the numbers? Because I want to, um, um, whatever it is, do you understand? And then lose the election. And then for another eight years, I'm in the wilderness again. So even, even those from that part of the country, as you can see, they themselves will also be asking themselves the same questions too. If it comes to us, do we have the numbers to win the election? Which, which, part, of the country, which part of the country are you referring to that has the numbers? Well, from what we see, from what we hear, from what they pull out from the business, it's, it's not the north that is the numbers. <laughs> Why are you saying from what they <laughs> from what they told us from independence? So you seem not to trust we're, those numbers. We're, we're waiting to be corrected. <laughs> we're waiting to be corrected. But you know, but from what we know, from national census, uh, whatever. Now, whether it is real or not, whether it is uh, whatever, what we can see is that the numbers are, are in the north. So anybody that wants to win an election in this country has to find out the interest or not either by building alliances with them or by throwing up kindness from there. So that's what APC would be, would be thinking of right now. Do you understand? Which candidates can mute Atiku in the voting blocks of the North? If we cannot throw up a candidate that is from that side for whatever reasons, can we throw up a candidate that can build bridges to that side to bring in the votes? Those are the questions they're asking themselves right now. Does the party have a candidate? Does the party have a candidate who can build bridges um, from the south? Because of course we're looking at uh, you know equitable distribution and equitable power rotation in the country, uh, or let's call it fair uh, power rotation in the country. Um, no, 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 my brother. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. You see, you see, in politics, uh, you don't talk. You don't use these words you're talking about no, equity, it, it is, fair. It is, it is part of the conversation. No, that, 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 that's the political science class. That's the political science class. You know, you know, I read political science. I have a master's in political science. These are things we talk in classrooms. I'm, 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 I, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not doubting your, 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 your academic credentials, but the APC... No, no, I didn't I did, I did, I did say you're doubting. I'm just telling you, I'm just trying to illustrate my position as against your position. You see, when you use words like equity, fairness, fair play, justice... Those are theoretical words that really, really don't hold on the ground of politics. What is equity? Is my ability. What is fair? What is just my ability to win votes? You get there's no sentiment. You get, and it begins to look like it really look like a certain part of the country understands that more than the other part of the country because you don't you don't talk about fairness, equity, all of that. No, I need to win votes. I need to hold power. It's not about give me power, give me power, give me power, give me power. Like we had somebody shouting in south south. No, work for All right. it. All right. So APC right now, I'm telling you, I'm not a member of the APC, I'm not in the screening committee, I'm telling you very soon that if there are serious people 
they'll be asking themselves this question. Atiku has emerged. Atiku is a strong force. Atiku, PDP is a strong force. PDP has structures nationwide. Atiku can, can, can take this thing from us. Which candidate can we throw up that will at least, if nothing else, divide the votes in a, in a strong voting block? Or which candidate can we throw up that can build an alliance in those areas that have strong voting blocks so right. we can mute him and pick him out? All right, just so, well, Erika, uh, let's, let's hold the thought now. Um, we'll roll the tape and listen to what uh, Bola Metimbu said at that uh, uh, screening venue at Traskop Hilton okay. in Abuja. Okay, sir. Your transmission, mm. electricity transmission, is an highway. That's what we we the problem we still have. And, and you remember that I brought Aaron to the country. Yes, electricity. Okay. Okay, talk to yeah, the telecommunication that is so resources in Nigeria today. I brought Econet. Econet is now here. Mm. Yes. Yeah. As them to flip on the 5G now. The option that they have 5G. Mr. Kelly. Nigeria is rich. It is. Mm. That is the best. <laughs> they just take him and do it. And uh, the essence of our livelihood must be placed on long term, medium term, short term values. So each value is for us. You know, and uh, and if you bring commodity exchange, establish it. And it, it was the first topic of my bad day to look on when uh, we started this MGC. I brought people to make presentation to the federal government. Secondary, primary, city. <laughs> Uh, Joseph Edgar, um, that's uh, Bola Betunubu uh, of the All Progressives Congress making this presentation to that uh, screening panel. But there was anxiety ahead of um, uh, the screening exercise when it was revealed that uh, the screening committee, the seven-man screening committee, will be led by Odigo Oyegun. Um, the Tinubu camp were apprehensive because um, uh, Odigo Oyegun, who is the first uh, substantive national chairman of the APC, is believed to be a political um, uh, enemy or, let me say, adversary of uh, the APC national leader um, since the 2020 Edo governorship poll. Um, also, uh, there was fear in the camp of uh, Tinubu, according to some reports, when it was revealed that the screening committee will entertain um, a petition, a letter written to that committee, asking them to disqualify Bola Tinubu over uh, uh, certain or alleged, let me call it, questionable uh, education qualifications. A letter was written um, by one Sagera my Iyali, um, who identified uh, himself as an APC member from Kano State, is talking about the questionable uh, uh, Chicago affair and other um, things. So this is some of the intrigues um, surrounding Tinubu's appearance before the screening panel. Very quickly, because we're out of time, your thoughts on that? You know, Tinubu uh, are like, you know, why are you not telling me now? Well, you, like I said earlier on, APC, have just found themselves in a very, very tight spot. As in, PDP has shown up a very powerful opponent, very powerful opponent. If they feel that their best chance of winning the election is to throw up any candidates with all of these baggage, then really, really, really up to them. I can't stand and cry for them. Because all that's got through is that, is that if some of these allegations are anything to go home by, you get, he'll be taken to the cleaners in the election. All right, Do you all know? right. People no. just, it's, 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 it's like a boxer. It's like two boxers, and then someone goes to the ring with a bad hand. The, 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 the other opponent just be punching that hand. Do you understand? It just makes the election all about those baggages. Do you right. understand? So, 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 like I said, you know, I, I can be very, very um, mercantilist about these things. No emotions, no sentiments, nothing. I think that democracy 
in Nigeria will be strengthened. The EBPC can throw up a very credible candidate that can take the fight to article. All right, we have to go. We have to go. Joseph Edgar, thank you very much for your time. Okay, and that's the size of a package today. Um, our job is done for now. Uh, it's been The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Stay with us because ahead we have the news at 9. My name is Kofi Patels. We return tomorrow. Good morning.